Hello, and welcome to the Progs Log, where we go through 2000 AD issue by issue. Uh, I'm Michael. I'm Craig. And we are doing our inaugural episode looking at Progs... 2348. And 2349. Do you want to do 2348, or well, should we I, just do this week's one? I thought we'd do, like, this week's one, but, like, we're, we're, this is our first one. Yeah. And we, we could just have the, sec- the other one to hand and talk about it, because we'll be talking about the whole stories as well. Yeah, because like, we've got a lot of um, mm. stories completing in 2349. Yeah, rather than... this is the conclusion to most yeah. of the, the run. I think it's, this is the best place to start an ongoing comic by comic. Uh, I think that uh, the best place to start anything talking about 2080 is just wherever you can. That Because is... if you're starting at the beginning, you've got a long way to go. Yeah, like that is a sickness that comic people have. Yeah. Where they're like, and specifically it's a sickness that new people have getting into comics. Where they're like, oh I'd like to get issue one so I can get caught up. Yeah. And sometimes that's fine. Where like issue one was like a month or so ago. With American comics, you also get a lot of like short runs where short it's like runs, you only got yeah. to get to issue like twelve or something. Mm. But one of the things I love about comics in general, British comics, American comics, is just getting what's there, like whatever the current issue is, yeah. diving in and seeing if you can make anything out of it. Two thousand eighty can be a little trickier than most sometimes, where it's like you're jumping in an issue prog mm-hmm. eight of whatever and. But there's a little blurb at the start that I find very helpful. I do not read the blurb. You should read the blurb. I will not read the blurb. This is a listener like message. Read the blurb. As with any podcast that I do or want to make, mm-hmm. uh, I will put it in as like a thing where if you pay me far too much money, mm-hmm. I'll start reading the blurb. The blurb. But as it is, I will not read I, the blurb. I, I get you're paying me lots of money to do the thing. Right? Yeah. I understand that on a primal level, but... <laughs> I genuinely think the blurb is really handy. Even even for like you know when they do future shocks where it's like mm-hmm. a one off story that's it's just a little short story. That still has a little bit of blurb of like context for the setting and stuff. Like it's if you cannot convey important information to me in the comic itself, mm-hmm. it is not worth me reading it because then it's just a bad mm-hmm. comic. I again primarily agree with you. Though that is good rules to live by. Yeah. But sometimes reading a sentence really help. I think about it because. Like it's an, an extra piece of reading material that's in the comic that if you don't read it, you're you're missing out a page. Mm-hmm. Even though it's the same thing every week, it is is a helpful thing if you you're starting a story or you're jumping in on a story. But also, I remember going to the, the 2080 YouTube channel and they have the same thing but as YouTube videos, and it's like basically that blurb for their series, right? As a YouTube video, and like there's been so much context that's been explained from series by watching those videos and like i'm, I'm not helping my argument here because like I, <laughs> I i do agree that you shouldn't have to like read outside material to get the comic but sometimes if it's only a sentence it can be valuable do you think there's anything like that in this particular prog <sighs> maybe for the the future shocks because <laughs> this is the thing was this week the uh, the future shock, or did we have a future shock uh, last this week? This week had a future shock in it. Yes. Yeah. Should uh, we should sh- we start like should we give any context? Say like well, two thousand AD is a British sci-fi yeah, anthology I, I, magazine. I think we should probably like introduce ourselves and our mm. relationship with the with the comic. Yeah. A little bit. So um, my name's Michael. I've already said that. Uh, I have been getting two thousand AD since I was in university, which is maybe like ten years ago now, maybe a little bit before. It was a thing. It was a comic that you could get when there wasn't a comic shop about, because mm. you can get out W. H. Smiths, and it's like five ish comics in in one. Five ish comics. They're about five pages each, but it's like an anthology. Yeah. You know, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. My my mum used to really like 2080 mm-hmm. back in the 70s. That's a that's um, a big time to be in it. Yeah, maybe the early 80s actually. Even so, um, she she has like somewhere in the storage, she's got like a prog number three. Mm. Well, that stuff. that is from seventy seven. Yeah. So, so like we've got uh, there's this family history with it. I think that's kind of all I can really say about my relationship. I I've been getting it here and there at different periods, and I really like two thousand eighty. My relationship with two thousand eighty, I got it when our local comic shop started to get it in, and that was around the time. That uh, the... I, th- I think it started getting it in because I was asking for well, it. Well, you might have been asking for it, and then they they might have got it in, and then I I got I got it for about maybe a year less than a year, but it was it was during it was like twenty twelve when the dread film came out, so it was like a big push. Oh uh, yeah, maybe. And um, then I fell off it, and then I fell back on again hard during the pandemic. Yes, because you could still get comics from supermarkets and news yep. agents uh, when other shops like Fool, you know, comic shops were closed. That was that was definitely a time I got back into it as well because oh. I hadn't been yet. I hadn't been getting anything comics wise and that was the only thing you could get. And it's 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 weekly. It's a weekly comic. Yep. It's a weekly British comic, um for three pounds. It was three pounds, it's about three fifty now because of living cost, inflation and whatnot. 
um but it's 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 a really good i think ritual for myself to get it mm. like once a week and it's it's a good bit of stability and it's personally I've, I've got a problem where like i'll just consume the same thing over and over if i'm allowed to so i really like, well, to... like the same individual issue or well i mean i have read a lot of comics over again i know yeah. that's not something that you necessarily partake in but no I, no i do have favorite american comics uh, that i love multiversity is I, I definitely have like favorite individual issues that yeah. i might go back and read again but um but I, I will, for example, just watch the same series of Alan Partridge over and over mm. again. So my, my sort of media pool can be quite limited. If I have the ability to just like read and watch what I want, I'll um I will. But 2000 AD offers a lot of like, you know, it's 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 different writers and different artists every week. Yeah, there's different variety like stories like come back in, drop off, and you know sometimes it's really good and sometimes it's not as good. And... With, with 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 American comics as well, I'll I'll find writers and artists that i love and i'll just stick with them mm -hmm. but in two years and eighty, you can you can find new people like you can get like, you be you can be exposed to new viewpoints and new um just new aesthetics and things mm -hmm. and sometimes you, you you read them and look at them and you're like that's fucking shite <laughs> uh but other times you're like oh that's amazing and i would have never had that if it wasn't just served to me by this anthology format yeah yeah so it's really good for that sort of thing <laughs> We do a thing after we read 2000 AD where we text each other a list in order of the different um, uh, strips that are in it ranked. ranked. So like, we'll be like, this week Dread was number one mm. to each other. And I think we should probably do that as part of the podcast. Yes, absolutely. That is a key feature of the podcast, yeah. I would say. I think we should talk about the origin of that and how I, th I think it comes from Shonen Jump. Yeah. Uh, is it Back a Man? Back a Back a Back Again's the ball-based one. Back a Man's the. But there is a manga series, Japanese comics called Back a Man, which is about making comics in the Japanese comics industry, and uh, it's got a lot of information about like what it's like working for that particular magazine, the biggest one that publishes manga. They had a whole thing in that about how the readers of Shonen and jump send in a kind of survey form with a ranked list of how much they liked each story that was running in the magazine so that we basically do that for 2000 ad i think it's it, it could be construed as a little bit reductive yes um, particularly given that it often ends up being like dread number one every single week dread number one every week you want to look out for the times where we don't rank dread number one because that must be like a, a fucking amazing prog or, or a lackluster dread or a lackluster dread which does happen yeah I, we should say it's it's slightly tongue in cheek. Like we're not like saying like oh this is number one and like this is like definitely the worst shite I've ever seen. <laughs> like it's it's you know we can send an text. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's a way of talking about the thing that we like. And usually it's like there's a lot of times when we we sit down, put the numbers on them, and then also put at the end of the text. They're all pretty good though. Like they're yeah, all they're all, they're all like about the same quality. Like to that, I think that this prog was very good overall. Yeah, I thought it was a powerhouse prog. Yeah. It had only four strips because something ended last week. I forget. Was it Black Portals and Black Goo? Oh, yes. I, I hadn't even noticed, but you're right. There are only four strips. There, are, there are only four strips. Usually there's five. When there's four or less, that means that a strip or more strips has been given more pages. And I believe Azmuth had more pages this mm. week. Probably Hershey had more Asmuth pages as well. Azmuth kind of felt like two comics uh, yeah. to me, which is fine because I, I like that comic. But I'll have things to say about that when we get to Well, it. we should start. We should start because... Yeah. The death and Tharg have to say, because Tharg is the editor of 2000 I'll go through my ritual of what I do when okay, I start reading okay. 2000 AD. I start on the Tharg's nerve center page. I read what Tharg's got to say. This time, he doesn't really have all that much to say. He talks about uh, the thing where there's going to be a thing in the magazine or like a crossover issue where they're going to be like imagining what had happened if like a different magazine had been folded into 2000 AD battle... What's it called? I think it's on the back. Battle action. Battle There's action. a lot of inside baseball stuff there because, like, it's mentioned that it's 2000 AD, mm -hmm. AD editor who's an alien from Beetlejuice. Is he from Beetlejuice? Uh, he is. Yes, he's from Beetlejuice. From Beetlejuice, and he he's mentioning another of his publications, which is the magazine. I suppose I should probably think like, who's our target audience? Do we, are we talking to people who know who Tharg is? We we know who Tharg is. Yeah, and this is Tharg Tharg actually. Tharg actually is the editor in chief of 2000 AD. Mm. Um, but there is a fictional character called Tharg, who is an alien. Green alien. Who is the f in the fictional world that 2000 AD, the f fictional side of the magazine, takes place in? It's a bit hard it's a to say. Br it's a proud British tradition yeah. of fictional kids' magazine editors. Yeah, where, like, in the 
uh, let's use the wrestling term kayfabe, the kayfabe of 2000 AD. The, the building that's written in is a spaceship and it's run by an alien and all the people that make the comics are called droids. There's a lot of terminology for 2008. Yeah. We've been calling it the prog. Yeah. It's, it's, they, they don't call them issues. They, they don't call them, call them issues. They call them progs. Because it's a sci-fi kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. I read I read uh, Tharg. Uh, he's, he's just talking about what's coming up. None of it was particularly exciting to me this time. Then I read the damage reports, which I didn't even know was there for quite a long time. I found it... Uh, I can't remember if someone on Twitter told me or if I was just glancing around and I saw that there was hidden text. Yep. So underneath the area where they're talking about all of the copyright stuff, there is a, a little bit... It's just in the same block of text that says damage reports, and there's a little like story that goes on like issue by issue, prog by prog. It's a little paragraph say. written presumably by the real editor. Like yeah. it, it's... Cybermat. Cyber, sometimes Cyber Matt is. Cyber Matt, there's there's various people that make the the humes the humes that make the the magazine the comic have a little bit where they put their their input and it's usually some kind of ongoing story mm. for the last I don't know four three years it's been about COVID yeah it's been about the plague years and it's been about a dramatization of I can't, those I, events they, they were doing a thing where it was like damage report colon the plague years week number yeah. whatever and i can't remember what week they it got, got up to, to like week 100 and something it was it was above 100 and um just to to like fill you with the um existential dread of yeah. how long i, like, I everything think the pandemic was, was like a year ago yeah you know? yeah it, like time doesn't really work for like since 2020 like it doesn't Broken. really feel like it's been that long <laughs> space is warped and time is yeah. bendable the the damage report is usually like a little humorous thing that'll be building up a little fun topical story that will pivot if something in the news happens that Absolutely. they can make be about Tharg. Yeah. In this particular uh, prog, the story is the first of several references to AI. They've gone hard on the AI. Yeah. It's a very AI heavy prog. So uh, the, uh, the, the story so far is that uh, a creator droid has come back from the future to the present to warn us about AI taking over the comic and I believe that this one has the uh, the sort of stinger at the end the Tharg is like well why why am I like where, where am I in all this and it's like oh Tharg you were replaced decades ago that was like there'll be no need for Thargs in an AI driven future because AI is bad that was um that was like a sentence, and, mm -hmm. and I know you have this thing where like I like I focus on little things too much, yeah. like little details. But I felt that I felt I felt like the the terror of like a Thargless world, mm -hmm. and I, I like the guy. Like he's he's a fun he, like he talks like verbosely about the same comics for like forty years, <laughs> and like it's really impressive. And like the idea that anything bad or even indifferent could happen to Tharg made me upset. Again, the kayfabe of the fiction around Tharg, like, Tharg is above any sort of physical threat. Yeah. yeah I, I he's, all, he's, a, he's a guy. He's, like, a, he's like an him. extremely powerful psychic alien. Yeah, who runs a comic. <laughs> <laughs> From Britain. For some reason. Yeah. To extract thrill power? Thrill power. Well, he's bringing thrill power. He's bringing the thrill power. 2080 is very concerned with the thrill power and it being given or applied to you. The comics themselves are very thrilling, mm. or um, at least they would like them to be. I'd like to before we move Mostly on to the, they are. move on to the actual comics. The whole um, Tharg in his little blurb a couple months back came out, like in the actual um, editorial for mm. the comic, came out and said, "Don't worry, humans, we're not going to actually do any a AI, a any AI art." Yeah, which is great. Like it, it's like what other fucking thing is like you're not getting that in like Marvel. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Like well, I don't I've not read every Marvel comic. But, like I don't think in Marvel it, like you know letters pages they're saying like oh don't worry we won't be like you know mm. replacing our artists with inhuman machines. Tharg's out there. He's he's putting that out there. I laugh though because like he once does... again the kayfabe of the fictional world in which Tharg he, exists. He uses droids. Like, yeah. and it's always about how the droids like the art droids are producing the comic. So it's it doesn't quite mesh, no. but, but it's a good sentiment. Like it, it's a good. It's it's like one of these things where just the specific exact yep. like way in which these two concepts combine means that it seems like he's talking nonsense. Yeah. No, it, I agree. It's, it is good that they have a, a firm anti AI art policy. Yes. Because uh, AI art is effectively theft. Theft. I mean, there's a lot. I mean, we could do a whole podcast yeah. about that. <laughs> 
before we go into the dread, should we mention like just should we do the format up top and say that like here's the four comics that are in the issue? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I refuse to read out the uh, the blurb of them. You don't have I've to read the blurb. Just the name. Just let but them give them a taste. We have got Judge Dread, the final part of a fallen man. That's the the particular Judge Dread story. Uh, Azimuth. Um, Tharg's thrillers and uh, this particular thriller uh, it's the th- thriller with a three thriller because there are three parts they're um, like a future shock that is a serial yeah and uh, this particular one is called Die Horde yeah I forgot it was called Die Horde Die, Die yeah. Horde uh, I hope that they get another one and they can call it Die Horde with a vengeance <laughs> and then finally uh, it's Hershey the cold and the bones mm. is that fine should we That's move fine. on okay. should, do you want to go into the granular detail of naming the artist and writer for oh. the I don't particularly often do that, but I probably should. Probably should, because like, we're, we're professionals, yeah? Absolutely. And it, also, like, credit where credit's You should due. do it from when we do the comics, because they have the actual, like... Ah, uh, okay. Because the, the blurb tells you a lot about who created the, the characters. Right. So, for example, mm-hmm. I'll say, moving on to Judge Dredd. Judge Dredd. Which is uh, script by Ken Nyman, art by Tom Foster, colours by Chris Blythe, and letters by Annie Parkhouse. So, uh, I have really enjoyed this particular Dredd story. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I was saying before, like we're probably just going to say Dredd is the best comic in, the best. In, in the prog every time. Oh, this have... has been really good for mm-hmm. me. I would say, like, because I, when I was reading it this morning, mm-hmm. I, I genuinely like said out loud to myself, that's a perfect little Dredd story. Yes, it's I... very noir. Uh, it's nothing necessarily mind blowing, but like it's it's just like a great sort of middle stakes like cool crime story, kind crime of, yeah. noiry thing. Yeah, it's crime noir, and it also features dread world stuff. It's not just yeah. because the, recently there was a dread story that went on for far too long that was about like gangs. Yeah, and I, I didn't... and there are gangs in this. There's gangs in this, but they're like shitty techno gangs. Yeah. They're like talking like. It's like 2000 AD kind of slang and they, I want to say they have like visors on their like yeah there's uh, the, the the guys that they're fighting in the first page here have goggles or like very triangular shaped sunglasses yeah it's, the, one of the, the big things that, like 2000 AD before but really before the cyberpunk game and then more importantly mm. anime came out 2000 AD was like the last bastion of like just cyberpunkness like there's there, there's the the RPG game in that, but like it's, it's the, like week to week you're getting like mega city, like dystopian stuff. I kind of want to and believe you absolutely could run a a game of cyberpunk the RPG set in mega city with yeah. like j- mega city judges running around. But I think it would work. It, you know, it fits together extremely well. Previous to this, there was like a sort of gang politics story, mm-hmm. which was I really wanted to end. By the time it ended, it was yeah, the best thing I mean, I could like, say it about felt it. like it did end, and yeah. then just kept going, kept going. And I didn't understand a lot of the nuance of it, and I didn't understand why I should care about the gang characters. Yeah. In this though, the the story is about an ex judge, an ex judge who was uh, f- found to have committed a crime while being a judge, which sent off to Titan. It's one of those things where the judges mm-hmm. in 2000 AD are like comedy fascists, like the most fascist, like ultra fascists. Yeah. But also they're the fascist ideal where they'll punish their own. Yes. Like um, they'll, they've, got a, they've got a jail for evil judges instead of just... Instead oh. of just like, oh, that's fine. You're yeah, you're one of us. We'll promote you. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, and also, Judge Dredd himself is specifically like even more that. Like he, he's fascist Superman. Like he is the most fascist, and also the most like just robotically law. Like if you're following the law, he he's the guy that fascists think think they're being. Mm-hmm. It and... makes it makes writing for Dredd and reading Dredd tricky sometimes. Oh, cause, absolutely. Because he is a monster, but he's he's a consistent monster. Like he's not hypocritical like, a lot of the time. Dread is much more of an admirable character than he is a good character, mm. like morally. It's it's one of the, the great things about him. It's one of the things that I think is really artistically unique about Judge Dread, is that like he's so flexible in the ways that you can use him. Mm-hmm. He's very inflexible in his morals. the least inflexible like, yeah. character, but um, but as like, a tool, you as... can you can have in like week to week. Judge Dread can be. Uh, a hero saving the day one week, the villain of the piece the next week. I believe the original writer had a checklist for that, where he would check those sort of things off as he was writing the stories. Core part of the DNA of the character. The only story that will always be in 2080 every week, and yeah. that is the reason why he's just he's, he's a very good and usable and flexible character. But he wasn't in Prog 1. No. No. But 
We'll get to Prog one. Yeah, at a later date, possibly. Prog but... slog classic. Yeah, give us money. Um, so there's this other judge called Asher, and uh, he is a former judge. He has come back. He served his time on Titan. Uh, he's been working as a uh, mob enforcer. I, th- I don't think he knew that it was him in the first. Well, there's, it's, this is like part the, of the, story. the last part of this story, but it's yeah. also a trilogy of stories where he, where he came back originally, mm. if you remember, and he was he was going straight. Yeah, like he was working with like some lovely robots. I remember lovely them. robots in the sewers. Yeah, like he, and like the robots were like good working class guys, just happened to be robots. Yeah, and they like had this this guy's back because he was one of them, and he was they were like robots doing like sewage work in the sewers, and Asher being an ex like con judge, the only job he could get was working in the sewers. But they they had solidarity because like he was he was one of them, and I forget how it went bad, but no, it, it went bad. It went bad. He ended up he ended up beat. So like the start of this story, like there's like a mysterious masked man mm. going around killing like only the people that are on his list. I think and he knew it was Asher. I think he, he, he dread like saw the footage of this yeah. and was immediately like, well, this could be Asher. Not sure though. Well, that was that, the... that's the weakest part of the story. I think actually is how much um, dread just like instinctively knows what's going on sometimes that's good though sometimes that good good dread work is a thing you'll hear from us a lot and like i I don't know if i could define to you what good dread work is but we'll be calling it out when we see it absolutely if you remember the first part of the story uh asher kills a guy by throwing a knife from his boot yes and And dread says nice boot work nice boot like, or nice boot knife work or something boot, boot, boot knife is like a meme within the, the 2000 AD community yeah. we should call it toucan we should start our oh, well, yes we should we should you should introduce that concept actually uh my partner uh, referred to 2000 AD as toucan once and i forget what prompted my partner to do that but i think it's perfect because it's it's 2k ad toucan and if you're from 2000 AD and you're listening, because of course you are. Like, what, what else have you got going on? I don't know why I'm antagonizing people today. <laughs> it's just the mood I'm in. Toucad. It's great. It's like, you don't want to be saying 2000 AD every time you're talking about 2000 AD. Welcome I, I, to the 2000 AD podcast. I tend to, but... Toucad. Toucad. It's, so, it's got great mouthfuel. I, I would agree. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it seems like a word. We'll see, we'll see if we can make it happen. Yeah. Make, is it make Fletch a thing? Make that... Fletch a thing. Fetch. So Stop trying to make Fletch happen. But we, we will make Toucad happen. We'll cause, like, it feels great. Try it. We'll like, try. try it yourself. Like, you're listening. See it. Say two cad. Go down the shops, pick up two cads. Yeah, pick up two cad. Tell them that you want some two cad. I don't. I don't know why you're interacting with the people that are selling you your, your comics. But go on. Anyway, so this is the end of that story with Asher. Um, things have gone bad. It Red's became... on his tail. Uh, the mob is also on his tail. Yes. And... He's he has the reason he went to Titan mm-hmm. is because he beat a guy to death. And the sort of through line of his character is that he's wanting to protect slash get the daughter of that man out of Mega City 1, out of Crime's kind of clutches, the, the judge's clutches. Uh, he, he took her very directly out of Crime's clutches last prog? Yeah, that? she had like a drug boyfriend that I think he beat to death off panel. He, he definitely made dead. The made method dead. by which he did that, I'm not entirely sure. Would you say he that killed he killed a whole gang of drug dealers as well? Would you say he unalived them, Michael? I would not. Uh, even if you paid me a ridiculous amount of money, I even do, through the Patreon, I, I do not want to to be forced to use that ridiculous word. <laughs> he killed them. He killed them. He murdered them, perhaps. Yeah, it was a crime that he committed. Yeah. He, he definitely did. Uh, the thing is, like, because I didn't, I really liked when he was trying to go straight, and like, I can't remember why it went bad, but I wasn't necessarily on bored with how quick it went bad and how like committed to being a mob enforcer he became and i know he's not committed to it. He's, he's, he's still he's using it to get money to give to the yeah the child and the, and... The, he, was, he was doing the whole thing like i've got a, a code that i operate by i'm not just going to be murdering people randomly in the streets I, I do think it's a bit like because we're talking about how like dread you can't necessarily like you shouldn't like yeah. dread and like he is an ex-judge this asher guy and mm-hmm. like he he is he's he's, he's not an ex-fascist he just he just doesn't work for the fascists anymore. Yeah. Like he, he is a bad guy. He killed a guy, and pre- presumably he killed a lot of people whilst a judge mm-hmm. for bad reasons because they're comedically evil a lot of the time. A lot of the time. So like it's it's hard when those strips trying to like pull sympathy for him. You know, because because he, he's like a cyborg guy. He's like, he's had like cyborg stuff done to him on. Importantly, Titan and... there's a whole through line in this which comes up right at the end. Mm. Dread is like he thinks he's he still thinks he's the good guy. Yeah. And like that's, I think, a particularly like noiry. Like that's the whole moral of the yeah. whole story. I also I like that Dread never believed him. 
ideally i'd like dread to be like well you've served your time like i'm not going to suspect you as a criminal because like he should be that like single-minded like what well, you're like no you you broke the law as a judge as a judge you're the type of guy who would yeah i've got my eye on I, you i think that's good like even if because like he could have been like fully repentant and mm-hmm. he could have been like reformed by titan even though that's probably not possible by their methods but he, he could have been right that yeah. could have been the story and dread could have still be on him because jed's a fascist and i like that work specifically i like that dread never for an instant believed that he had any possibility of be a top lad. I'll just finish wrapping up what actually happens in the issue, and then like, there's, I'll, I'll pick up on some things that I like. Yes, yeah, go for it. So basically, he's trying to get away from Mega City with this uh, girl, this woman. Uh, he goes there. It turns out that his escape route, the mob already knows that that's the way he'd be going. A shootout happens. There's a great bit. I think at the end of the last prog, mm. where uh, his old mob handler was like, "Oh, don't you know? No one's coming to help you." And the last panel is just Dread rocking up yeah, on his bike. Yeah. And, uh, again, like, uh, the little thing that I said out loud to myself, like, I don't know if uh, Dread's necessarily coming to help, <laughs> but... Dread the force of nature. Yeah. Like he... <laughs> Dread the Kamen Rider, like, well, you're in his way, you will die. Absolutely. In fact, <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a great bit in here, speaking of, like, just bits that I like, where um, the very first thing Dread does when he engages is... Because um, Asher takes out a bunch of the, the guys with his with The gangers. And then there's a bit where, like, Dredd's internal monologue is just, because uh, he comes up behind one and he's like, I don't really know who's 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 who, who's, like, uh, allied with what. And then there's just a panel of him pulling his gun on one guy and it says, put the creep down, one less variable at play. Yeah. Just like that kind of cold, like... Now, did you get that he was killing him? Because I, f- I found the art in that panel a little bit. It does look a bit like he's just pointing the gun at him. I thought he might have, like, hit him with his gun, whacked him or knocked him out. Because, like, I, I got from that that, like, this... This guy that is a threat to Asher's life mm. just is just like a, a fly to dread. Like he's like a fully armed Ooh, drudge. Although, actually, one of the things that I really like about this story is how much of a threat Asher is yeah. to dread. Like, there's a bit in one of the early issues of this story where a shootout during a, a chase mm. and Asher shoots dread three times. Yes. Uh, in like like on 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 his badge and his helmet and like one of the pauldrons. Uh, the the like medic that he's talking to after that saying oh you got really lucky there dread and dread is like no he was definitely aiming for the armored sections if he wanted me dead i'd be dead yeah and like you you very rarely get that with judge dread judge dread is the ubermensch like yeah. nothing is a threat he is a terminator yeah he's... the I, I like i like asher as a villain like i like him as like an inside man that was a judge and mm. can do good boot work boot knife work yeah like he knows all the codes or like what the codes were before they changed them and like in this issue, he's specifically trying to get out of the city by going through like democratic tunnels. Yeah, it's a, that was a good bet. The, like, the Democrats, not like the American political party, but people that want democracy, want demo- so the, are an oppressed group. The the rebels. They, they, yeah, they've got like smuggling routes in and out of the city and stuff. So he's he's using them. They are like wanting democracy as a political extremist position. I think one of them was like one. paid off by the gangers as well, because I think there's a, like a democracy guy that takes a shot at Asher. Yeah, I think so. Or, or there's definitely a few democracy guys yeah. that are like already dead. Yeah. What happens? So they they have the shoot out. Dread shows up. Um, like everybody else gets taken out, and Dread is like, you know, come out with your hands up, sort of thing. The girl gets away and saying like, I actually, I've been very scared of Asher the whole yeah. time. And Dredd uses that against him. He's like, you yeah. hear what she's saying about you? She's calling you a psycho. Uh, basically, Dredd is like, I'm giving you the option of like coming into the cubes. Or I think Asher is... They have a, a sort of like talk anyway about whether or not he's going to the cubes or they, they, he's be, just but There's a bit where they both know. Like, Dredd's like, oh, I could use heat seekers. Yeah. To just, and like Asher's like, well, I could use heat seekers. Well, yeah. Asher comes out saying, save your heat seekers, Dredd. I'm yeah. coming out. It was really well worded. Like, like the pacing of great, like that. Great, like, shadow of the hero stuff. Yeah. Um, and but anyway, Asher decides that he would rather just die than go back to jail, mm. and Dredd shoots him. And uh, the last line, uh, a true, because it's called penitent man. A penitent man. He's like a truly penitent man deserving of forgiveness. I'll let you know whenever, whenever I meet one. Great line, great yeah. dread work. Like, and like I was saying, like I, I really enjoy that he just never gave him a chance. Like, <laughs> like you, you, that's a bad character trait. Yeah. But it's it's great for this fascist dick. You know, like it's good evil dread work he's he's that's yeah. his i don't know if this is quite evil dread but it's definitely not hero dread not hero dread and like i say i, I might have preferred to like dread being on board with him being a pendant man because he served his sentence or whatever mm-hmm. but it, it's good like profiling like he, he is he was a criminal so he will be a criminal again and i guess it's mega city one so that's that's a whole like you yeah. know eternal but crime things are like 
there is a panel here mm. where Dread is coming up, and uh, it's after the like, "Oh, save your heat seekers." And I think he's saying this is where Dread is saying, "Like, you still think you're the good guy here." And Dread looks like he's smiling. Huh. I have never seen <laughs> Judge Joseph Dread smile at any bastard, and they're both smiling at each other. Oh, like, right. Yeah, I mean, I never, I didn't catch that. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can. That definitely looks like a smart. There is, there. Well, that changes my appreciation the, the, a little bit. There is a certain sense of camaraderie and mm. like maybe even rivalry going on here. Because I read that as like, because like Judge, like you still think you're the good guy, and yeah. like, Ash is like, well, you do. Well, Ash. that's the other thing, because Asher is like, is like, is like, you still think you're a good guy here. Why not? You still do. And then the panel after that mm. of, is just Judge Dredd's face not saying anything, no longer looking like he's smiling. Yeah. So, so that one hit a nerve. Yeah, that was just a great little piece of characterization. That whole page, and that that's the kind of thing that you get in 2000 AD. And like mm -hmm. we we call it good dread work, but it's it's that good characterization. Mm -hmm. You get your like five page story, but there's there's usually bits of like oh my god, like this like one moment of like perfection. Yeah, so so good writing across the board. You would say on the the Asher story. Absolutely, I, I've really loved the story. Do you have any um, thoughts on the art at all while while we're here? Art's very good. Um, I I think they sometimes change quite how ugly Asher is supposed to look because he's meant to be quite ugly he he, he is a, a cyborg in a not particular like an old style like just had bits of metal jammed in here at various points there's some other good things that I like about it because he's got like um he's got like cyborg eyes yep. so you can see in the dark because he had to he had to work the minds up in Titan Dread calls out that they both have they infrared. both have cyborg eyes which is consistent with the story I read fucking ages ago yeah where Dread, Dread was getting a medical and they were like oh surprise Surprisingly, like un like uh, modified body for a man of your age, cyborg eyes though. Yeah. So like that's the the, the, the they've definitely read the style guide or whatever. Cyborg. Yeah. Continuity consistently must be yeah. a fucking nightmare with oh, 2080 because it's it's like what 45 years, but also it's every week. Yeah. And there's a magazine. Crazy. I feel like I did have other cool things that I wanted to say about it, but to be honest, that's that's probably enough for. for I just would say it. lack of cool guy robots in this one for me. Knocks it. It's that's not like a real knock, but like it's it's a knock. Like I I've really enjoyed it. Yeah. So it, it it's been good. It it's like you were saying it was sort of a mid crime kind of thing. Yeah. So it was like it wasn't like high stakes. It was like a criminal, yeah. an ex judge. But like it definitely felt. I don't think stories need to be world ending no, stakes no. every time. What I think they need to be for me personally though is to feel like Mega City One or to feel no. It's it's, it's sometimes silly, or sometimes grim. But there's like. I was talking about that previous crime story that was happening with the families and stuff. Mm. That didn't feel like sci-fi enough, I guess. No, it was just like a police mob thing. And, and this one is just a police thing, but like, there's a lot of like, because there was that is it this issue where he had Asher had like sent like um, info on the crime family he was working for. Yeah, and yeah, like it was either this one or the last one. And they were moving in on the crime family, and that was like a kind of splash panel, a bigger panel than most, and it was just like a phalanx of like armored robot judges mm. with shields. And then meet like human judges behind, behind them. That. that was a great like. See when it's like punctuated by bits of like sci-fi stuff for me. That that really elevates like the crime stuff. Well, I can absolutely understand that. So, um, spoilers, but I'm gonna be probably putting Dread number one this week. I'm gonna go through all the comics and remember what happened to yep. them, and then I'll make my choices. Uh, next comic is Azimuth, written script by Dan Abnett, art by Tazio uh, Betin. Colours by Matt Soff and uh, letters by Jim Campbell. If we get any of the names wrong, pronunciation wise, or if they're I, just. I, the, I do apologise. We apologise and just correct us, because, yeah. you know, we, we're reading these things. We're probably going to say terminology from the comics, and you'll be like, what? That's not how you pronounce that. It's got a silent W. It's actually Thrill Power. Yeah, Thrill. All this time. Uh, so, Azimuth. Inflictor of Sorrows. I was yeah. going to say, should we, like say what azimuth is before we get into it kind of uh, thing or? well yes but i would like to say that this is the issue of azimuth that has the triumphant return proper of susie nine millimeter susie nine millimeter who you said might have died and i couldn't remember if she just died off panel or like side of a panel or not uh well i think she probably did die because yeah like, we'll go into slightly what uh, azimuth is azimuth has been like my favorite little experiment that i've seen mm. done Quite a long time. It's a comic by Dan Abnett, who does quite a lot of comics He's for 2080. Very, like, huge writer, like just constantly yeah. putting stuff out. Uh, one of the comics that he has done before has been Sinister Dexter, or I believe more recently just Dexter, because I think Sinister dies. Or something. Got turned into a robot. Some kind of digital thing. Yeah, so bear that in mind. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in 
fairly recently a new comic written by him called Azimuth came uh, came into the prog and Azimuth is this like really lovely art style like oh the art is gorgeous um and like eastern inspired setting but it's also like very like it's kind of beyond cyberpunk it's like digital punk I I st- I remember when they were like promoting it and it kind of looked like kind of Cthulhu type stuff in the terms mm-hmm. of like there was a, like a lot of odd alieny like it's kind of alien esque. Yeah. You should say that you have like a kind of love hate thing with Dan Abnett because there there are definitely comics by Dan Abnett, Sinister Dexter being one of them. Sinister Dexter that one. really annoy me. Like not like all the time, always. We're here to make friends. You know, we're here to ingratiate ourselves to the the two cat community. Not necessarily. <laughs> Um, because like, uh, so if we're talking about Dan Abnett, yeah. Dan Abnett also wrote The Out, yes. which you really liked. I really liked The Out, but I, I can understand. St- I started out really liking, mm-hmm. but God, I wanted it to end. But you should start at the start. Like, he wrote Feral and Fool, which was one of the things. Oh, yeah. That... Did he? Yeah, he's the Feral and Fool guy. Oh, yes, that's Because that true. was the thing. That was We kept talking about it, because when we got back into Toucan proper a couple of years ago, Feral, Feral and Fool was... Fro- I can't speak. It's too many R's. Mm-hmm. Feral and Fool was running, and it's a kind of uh, D&D-ish yep um yeah uh, high fantasy high, very high kind of fantasy. Heroic fantasy kind of dark yeah. fantasy dark like kind of muddy high fantasy because one, one of the like the uh, it's definitely dark fantasy ish because the characters in it were like doing it as prisoners like it was yeah prison. but there was a lot of there a lot of fantastical I stuff don't know about prisoners but yeah they, they were against their will maybe or like they were they were like bad guys who in order to be allowed to exist within the good guy kingdom had to do work for them. Or they were something like a suicide like squad yeah. kind of a thing. But they were a D&D party. Yeah. They were very obviously an D&D party. Like one of them was a necromancer. Yeah. One of them was like basically an orc. I don't think they were called orcs. Mm. But like. But it was very good. Yeah. It was very silly. Mm-hmm. Like it was It was very like. Co- it was like a comedy. And I believe it had Sonic the comic art on it. Didn't it, it? Well the, the artist was. Oh I'd, I'd have to have it to hand. But it was one of the. Name it was Sonic it, it, it was the the main artist. I believe, was it Richard Elson? Or? Richard Elson, that yeah. was him. Yeah. So like it, it was like a crossover of our interests. Like it was a D and D fantasy thing with yeah. like nineties guy art and like it was well written. And then the out came out or another book of the out came out because mm-hmm. there's multiple books of it and I liked it. It was a, it was a space thing. It was a cut about in space. It when when it was. The first thing that I read of it was the main character, and we're now talking about a totally different comic. We're, we're giving context. We're, 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 we're barreling back to Azimuth. I'll, I'll keep it short. So you you I'll, need I'll the, like, the people need to know I'll your relationship. I liked the start of the out where, like, the concept as it was introduced to me was that the main character was doing a piece for a magazine, mm-hmm. finding humans far off in space where humans generally aren't, and taking pictures of them. And maybe writing a story for a magazine. It was a bit kind of Hitchhiker's Guide-esque, wasn't it? A, and, a little bit. And then it just descended into being... Like I was saying, I don't like necessarily like things to be like world-ending stakes. Mm. And just out of nowhere, it became this like galaxy-spanning war where like the main character was at the centre of it all mm. and had always had some kind of alien evil robot implanted within her. And like... Uh, I can't really remember a lot of the things that I thought particularly like I, annoying about it, but I, I ended up really disliking the out. I can understand your criticisms of the out. I just I wanted you to talk about it to just give you a back and forth on how like Dan Amnett writes a lot of 2000 AD comics. Yeah. And I think it's important. It's not just that he's written a lot of comics and we're talking about his current one. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of relationship between the various ones yeah. because of what's happening If I currently. see that Dan Abnett is the writer on a comic, I wouldn't necessarily be like, oh no. But like there will be a little bit of a, like, hmm, we'll see how this goes. When I see it, I'm like, yes, the 40k <laughs> guy, Space Marines. Yeah. Azimuth mm-hmm. uh, started off uh, fairly recently. Yeah, it was this year, wasn't it? It, was... it is. So we've already talked about how good it looks, and it does look oh fantastic. Oh my god, the art's incredible. Uh, I really love a lot of the characters it's Very as well. detailed and colourful. But like, we're, we're talking about the writer. Yes. And the thing that's like immediately impressive about Azimuth from the writing is the sheer number and quality of puns in this world. It is puns all the way down. Every, every character is a pun. Every single character, and every sometimes every location, yeah, is a pun. I don't get them all. Like, <laughs> there's too many. It's like a bombardment, and you're probably sitting thinking they're like, "Oh, that's cringe" or whatever. But like, it's great. They're they're very good puns. They're solid. Like, see, like from. It, like, like prog one of like yeah. azimuth with like 
Susie 9mm. Susie 9mm, uh, the Cray Cray Twins. The Cray Cray Twins. Because they're crazy and also those gangsters. There is a Baron Samady type character called Papa Leg Day. Papa Leg Day, who is a moddy builder. A mo- the moddy builder really got me. Because he's it, the, he's a body modder who is a body builder. <sighs> It's good. It's there, good there's, stuff. There's lots of them. Base level, right? Good. Base level of Azmuth. The art's amazing. Mm-hmm. Second level of it. Oh my god, the puns. Yeah. Also, the action's pretty good. The action's good. Yeah. Like, uh, there's some some really good poses in this particular issue of like Susie Nine Millimeter and like Kung Fu kick poses. So anyway, the other thing about Azmuth that I got such a kick out of is that the entire run is effectively a single joke. Yes. And I'm using joke perhaps a little bit like inappropriately there. Gag, but, maybe? Like a yeah. gag? A goof? Because the story up until this point has been like Susie 9 Millimeter is the main character. She's something called a cadavatar. Cadavatar. Because uh, like they die and then they come back. They can't ever properly be dead or like they're like undead. They respawn. They, yeah. like, she, she dies, she respawns. She, she dies a lot in this mm-hmm. issue. And she is tasked with a job to go by the Cray Cray Twins to go to the other Lords of the New Flesh and find out if they similarly have been having upsetting dreams. Yes. And she does. And the through line that she finds is that Mary Antoinette, the giant Mary Antoinette. Who's is, a giant robot, yeah. like a juggernaut. Uh, has, she says, let them eat quake. She, she does, and she quakes the ground. She says, like, okay, yeah, I can tell you about my dreams. I've been dream- having a very pleasant dream. I dream of horses. Mm. And then she goes to some other guy who's called the Lord of the Glitches or something. Yeah, he probably was, got a pun name. Probably, too. It, that was one of the ones where I didn't quite get, or they didn't yeah. feel strong. Like, it didn't. She says about, like, oh, I'm looking for, for dream stuff, and, like, Mary Antoinette says she dreams of horses. And at that point, he's like, ooh, because he hasn't been, like, cooperating before that. But he's yeah. like, ooh, horses, well, that... And he tells her that, like, uh, I've been having a specific dream, and it's that bit from um, the Bhagavad Gita, or is, that, or is it like a Bible thing? But anyway, it's like, I beheld a pale horse, and the rider was death. Yeah. And, like, you turn the page. Incredible page flip. One of the best I've ever seen. Mm. And it's like, I beheld a pale horse, and it's a zoom in on the logo of a Ferrari. It might be an off-brand Ferrari as yeah. well, like it, like a knockoff. And then, and then it says, "And the rider was death." And then it's like, "Zoom out!" The guy in the Ferrari is fucking Dexter from <laughs> Sinister Dexter, driving in Mad Max style, like all these guys chasing him to Azimuth from his own comic. It was a stealth crossover, and it was it was like eight issues in or something, like eight progs in. Like, did not see it coming. No, was like one of the most hype things that I've read in comics for a very long time. I don't even like Sinister Dexter that much. No. And also, like, from that point, it's been largely a Dexter-based comic mm-hmm. since then. This is, like I say, the return of Susie 9 Millimeter. Yeah. And uh, it's not really been as good when it's been, like, Dexter-focused. No. This issue has been the Susie 9 Millimeter issue. Yeah. And since then, it, whilst Dexter has been the main character of Asmuth, the puns have been badly suppressed. <laughs> and as soon as Susie 9 Millimeter came back, the puns were on point. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. The, the, we could talk for ages about the whole Sinister Dexter thing. We, I'm sure Sinister Dexter is like beloved by people from the 90s. Ni- we were from the 90s, but we didn't read it in the 90s. Yeah. Like, I'm sure it's got a huge following. It's like a long-running story about two hitmen uh, in comics. When, when I've been coming in and out of 2000 AD, Sinister Dexter has been running multiple times during those times. Yeah. Another podcaster would say that they're just blokes. <laughs> yes. They're just blokes. And, like, they're, they're blokes with guns. That has been something that has been used to good effect in this particular story. Yeah, though. yeah, absolutely. But, like, they're just guys with guns, and sometimes it's just an guy with a gun. Yeah. And he's very good at gunning guys. He's a gun shark. There's a lot of, like... like a card shark. Like a card Again, shark. Again, puns. Yeah. It, it's good. And, like, when puns happen, and because, like, like I say, it's only been two or three years that I've been reading 2000D consistently. Mm-hmm. When Sinister Dexter has come up, I've liked it mainly for like the sort of density of the writing and like panel layout because it would it would take when you would get a Sinister Dexter recently, you would it wouldn't be over in like cause sometimes you read a, a strip in the prog mm-hmm. and it would be over in like a couple seconds because it would be all action and a lot of times Sinister Dexter is all action but like it feels like a more of a read even if I'm not necessarily madly into some guys with guns and I'm sure there's a bigger following for them so it's a very complicated feeling. When Dexter, I keep trying to second guess myself because Sinister Ramon Dexter, Ramon Dexter, yeah. when Dexter drove into Asmuth because it was a, it was a huge hype moment, yeah. like you say, it was like, oh my god, what's going on? It's a good, it's a good gag, it's a good trick, and to also call. delivered via a pun, delivered via a pun yeah. that was being built up for the entire strip. Yeah, it's good, 
But then it did become a Sinister Dexter comic yeah. immediately after that. and To the point where I think he killed Susie 9mm in like a, a panel where you like that wasn't particularly like the frame the frame wasn't drawing your attention yeah. to it and then she was just dead until now well it, it's good work because she, she that's what she does she dies and she respawns yeah. and like I, I like it but i didn't notice it until you told me like, yeah. I, like and like, i've not went back to check that she she gets off by him or whatever yeah i haven't gone back to check either but he, he was being chased by a number of cadavatars it would make and sense one of them looked like her yeah so it, they all wear white the cadavatars we should talk about azimuth as like a setting because dexter was able to drive to it because in sinister dexter for however long there's been a rogue ai that's in that's slowly taken over the world this is yeah. uh, is this, this is the first part of the prog that is ai based mm. um which is it's fair because this story's been bubbling for years but like it's taken over Europe? Question mark. I don't know what download is, Michael. I'm not sure download is Earth, although maybe it is. I think they went to a parallel Earth at some point, but the, like when they were going to download, it was through like Eastern Europe, and they yeah. were definitely Eastern European places. They might be fictional ones, but they were. Download is the setting of Sinister Dexter, yeah. and uh, it might be a place on Earth. It might be their word for Earth. It could be a, for a uh, European... I, I don't Confusingly, know. Confusingly, it's called Download, even though that appears to be like a real non-digital world. Yeah. And now Azimuth is an equally real, but also digital Th world. This, this eldritch place, this alien place that Azimuth was set in before it became a Sinister Dexter comic yeah. is this sort of computer-based like tech bro like all of the people going around seem to have like um like like avatars from an mmo sort of thing it's, it's an or... mmo to me it's fortnite yeah everybody has a different skin yeah. sometimes skin that's the word I was skin looking for. and they, they sell skins at the skin market yeah. and like some of them are clearly like there was i saw sean connery from zardoz mm. in one of the panels so like they are like sometimes things from things but more often than not they're weird like alien or like eldritch I'm abomination crowd guys phase, uh, crowd scene here there's like a, a centaur not a centaur a cyclops that's like dressed up like a like a, a, a 15th century like dude dexter tries to get a he's trying to like book a passage on a plane at some point and that plane is just a warhammer 40k plane oh, is it? yeah it's got well, a, that'll probably be a dan abnett thing be, uh, maybe. He writes those books. yeah I, I don't know if you would specify that it was like specifically that 40k plane but it is well maybe like the artist just wanted to do it as a nod I, yeah i don't yeah, know yeah. But the point is, it this is a weird place, and like the people who live there think this is the only place on Earth. The, that's a big thing that comes up over and over big again. Because um, Dexter is going like, oh, I came in from outside, and yeah. that constantly gets him in trouble. Yeah. Because people are like, oh, well, you must be that that guy that's causing trouble, because he claims to be from outside the world. There is no outside, even yeah. though we we can talk about the concept of outside, but it doesn't exist. Like, yeah. And he's got a, he's got a yammy. Which is, I think, something... He does. Yeah, he's got... Well, you should probably tell people we, what you mean by a Yami. We were doing our own podcast. Yami from Yu-Gi-Oh! You know how in Yu-Gi-Oh! The little kid Yu-Gi-Oh! has a spirit inside of him who's like a slightly older version of himself yeah. uh, who plays the card games from and has a different voice actor. Or is the voice actor it's doing the a deep, same voice same actor. same voice actor doing a deeper voice. But that, that concept you see in fiction, there's probably a better term for it. But as a Yu-Gi-Oh! fan, I'm calling it the Yami. You can go inside your own mind to have a wee conversation with a mentor-like figure. Yeah. His, his mentor-like figure is an AI who's a good AI. Is good AI that I, I is different from the evil should, AI. Should be able to remember what the deal was there because I read those comics. I didn't read the ones where he got the AI. I read the ones where like it like it was a kind of mystery who was speaking to him, and yeah. then it turned out to be the good AI. Who's he's got a computer in his head, mm. which is funny because like a big thing of the way he's characterized within Azimuth is he's got barely any body modifications. Yeah, but like outside of Azimuth, he's got a computer in his head. He's got a computer in his head. He's got robot eyes as well. Yeah. And um, everyone, everyone makes a big deal about Dexter's eyes. Like, you've only got robot eyes. Like, what? Like, yeah. your, your flesh and some robot eyes. That's crazy, man. But, like, the, the, the yammy that he goes around with is an AI taking the form of his former partner, Finnegan Sinister, who I believe now is dead. I think he's he's a cadaver, so he, he's, he's dead. But he, he might show up, I guess. Yeah, like, I think he died or something in yeah. comics that I didn't read, but now is a, he's a villain. He's an antagonist that's chasing him down. Yeah. Um, did he die in the previous... This is the thing. The, like, last, I... the last one I remember, mm. he was the villain. Because yeah. he had died, and the evil AI that controls the world, that presumably is Annika in Annika, Azimuth, yeah. The... Uh, like, had, had brought him back to life as a creep fake. Yeah. Which is the, again, it's a pun. Great pun. Deep fake. Creep it's fake. A, it's, a, it's a robot guy that looks like a guy who was a real guy. Anyway. He's had, and like, I remember reading that first and, one. And creep fakes and cadavatars are apparently the same thing. Yeah, well, that was another good, I hesitate to say foreshadowing, mm. but it's a good use of, like, 
using a thing in Sinister Dexter to start your own comic and then not calling them the same thing, but they are the same thing. It's a good, it's a good reveal. Yeah, like, it's a good reveal. It was a good issue. It was a good, it was a good frog. It was, like it was, it was a double sized one or a, a one and a half normal amounts of azimuth. It was mainly Susie Nine Millimeter trying to kill Dexter. Yep. Yeah, um, I feel like we've talked over like the the cool things that we liked thing already, but uh, what actually happens is Susie Nine Millimeter comes back from the dead, tells us that she's been trying to kill Ramon Dexter and failing. Yeah. Six times, I think she says. Eight times? I want to say he's killed her eight times. Uh, he certainly gets to eight in the course of the comic if he mm. doesn't start at it, because uh, like we then see a number of scenes of her like coming at him and like noticing that he's talking to himself. Uh, after she dies enough, she goes to get some help from people and like gets some. There's new, a lot of weapon um, self narration about like so Susie Nine Millimeter being like this fucking guy. <laughs> he's he's got no data feed. Like how is he? How is he killing me? A named guy, a named yeah. cadavatar with my like my sword that I can summon. Like. Well, like I say, there's a great bit where like they're they're making a, a virtue of the fact that Dexter is just a man. Because yeah. like she's she's kung fu fighting him. This is the bit where the like the really good panel of her doing like a kung fu kick. Yeah, that is that's really great. really like that pose. Good on anyway. It. Uh, the narration is like, uh, she manages to knock the 9mm from his hand. Ah, I won't read the whole comic to you. But, like, it's it's like the narration is, is saying, like, you know, is like, you know he, he's just a man. Like, why is he able to, to beat me? And, like, he is just a man, but, like, he's very fast. He's very, very fast. skilled. And he's some kind of shark. He's... I don't understand. <laughs> I really enjoyed Susie 9mm not. Like, she's like, a shark? What, what do you mean? Yeah. And I'm like, I also feel that, Susie 9mm. <laughs> like... You say card shark, and I'm like, oh, okay, okay. Like, well, he's just a bloke. Gun sharks were, if I recall, extremely skilled, like, shooting people. Gunmen. Gunmen. Men, men gunners. Who you would hire to be a mercenary, and it was like, you can be a mercenary, and then you can be a gun shark, and mm. gun shark's better. Anyway. Then, Susan Man Millimeter gets a toxic sword or something? I didn't find it very clear how she, like... She got some bits. She got some upgrades from her pal. She she gets it from a guy called uh, Dunning Krugerrand. Pun on the Dunning Kruger effect, where you think you're smarter than you actually are. Thank you for telling me that because I was staring at that and I did not. Uh, that's I funny. That's related to intelligence because I didn't get it. Krugerrand. I I don't I don't get that bit. Mm. I, I I think Krugerrands are some sort of valuable. Ob- I don't know. It's fine because there's a million puns. Uh, she she meets Dunning Krugerrand in. A, Barbie Yagas. The Barbie Yagas was amazing. P- pun on Baba Yaga, the witch with a house on legs. Chicken and, legs. Uh, chicken legs. And Barbie Yagas, the, the legs are in fact Barbie legs. It's also a pink house. It's, it's pink. It's a dream house. Uh, and then the next time she has a fight with Ramon Dexter, she goes for the who we've been referring to as a Yami, mm-hmm. the, um, the AI guy, like noticing where he's speaking when he's speaking to himself and stabs the AI and that somehow works and now the AI is dying and uh, Dexter still manages to kill Susie 9 Millimeter but as we've talked that doesn't matter because she'll just come back Mm -hmm. and then like as she's dying she's like uh, what was what was that person that I just killed and he's like it doesn't matter like you're just doing your job now the world is ending yeah which I felt at the time but since I've been like Asmuth seems alright like it's it's this mm. it's not a dystopia it's not like I mean it's a feudal system I guess yeah I mean like it's it, they've not pushed the angle of like this shitty AI world that's just like it's it seems because of the art it seems quite nice like it does seem you can go to cool. Barbie Yagas like yeah, <laughs> like I guess they've got cadavatars that are running hits and stuff but like mm. have you seen the Sinister Dexter world like yeah well that's the thing the thing that I don't like about Sinister Dexter is it seems much it seems quite immature. Yeah. Like there's just a lot of like like they're they're not knob gags, but it's, it feels like the type mm. of world where there'd be a lot of knob gags. I think, I think the thing about that is normally if that was a comic I was buying, I wouldn't be into it. Mm-hmm. But it's an anthology, you know, and you're getting like a varied spread of stuff. So I don't necessarily mind it as much as a. I would. It's a space within 2000 AD that could be taken up by a comic that I like better. So I'm quite thankful that this comic in this issue was a Susie 9 millimeter Azimuth yes. instead of our own well, Dexter Azimuth. We should, we should round up our coverage of Azimuth by saying that complex feelings, mm. because it was a great reveal, yep. a great gag, but maybe I'm speaking for both of us here, but I, I think we could have done with Azimuth just being its own thing and mm. carrying on as it was. I would have also enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. I think it's, it's still got the, the, the potential mm-hmm. to be better as a thing that now has Ramon Dexter integrated into it than it would be otherwise. Mm. 
Uh, it's just a question of whether or not they manage to make it that way. Yeah. I think it's coming back in like 12 weeks or yeah, something. Yeah, it says, says it'll be like in prog number or whatever. And one, it's... two, twenty-one, sixty or something like that. There's quite a few, quite a wee ways to go until then. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, next, we have the thriller Die Horde. Die Horde's a great name. Keep forgetting about it. Part three, final one. I'm looking for the credits here. Here we go. Script by Eddie Robson. Art by Nick Brokenshire. He said that with a question mark. Brokenshire. Apparently that's... Yeah. Right in. Uh, letters by Annie Parkhouse. The story as a whole is that the, it's, it's set in New Zealand. So yep. every time I read any of the dialogue, I'm reading it in a New Zealand accent. You keep telling me that, but I keep forgetting. And it's, like... it's, it's very distracting to me. There has been some kind of war with aliens. Space war. Uh, during which time a lot of information has been wiped out. And there has is a guy who has died and he was a hoarder. So he's got a lot of information that means like maps and like restaurant menus like he's a full on hoarder he he does have restaurant menus but he also has videos of propaganda and like news coverage and that is like also incriminating stuff about what war crimes were done by both sides both during sides the war. of this space war humans and aliens and in this particular issue so like people go to try and get the um the information someone tur- turns up to say i'm his heir and i want you all out mm. doesn't end up particularly mattering as things go but uh, basically what happens is in this issue uh it turns out that she was in fact not his heir uh, she was a member of Earth Special Forces. Yep. And this is revealed by one of the crew of the um the, the team that was sent to yeah. go through his belongings. Then it turns out he's an alien, and he's actually trying to um, one of the crew. The, the one of the crew. Yeah. He's an alien, and and isn't trying to repair the record of lost information. He instead wanted to find this these videos of uh, like war crimes of Earth, so that they can destabilize the peace treaty between Earth and the aliens. This is a thing. People have died. Like the house is a security system. That it's it's another AI based one. It's the house AI based one has it's an AI that's like hooked up to cameras and laser beams. Yep. The the alien this is like told the house to activate all things that have the information of uh, the, the war, war crimes. crimes stored on them and unbeknownst to him one of those things was a clone pod clone pod that was the stinger for the part two was yeah. like the pod lighting up so out of the pod comes a giant man who is a modified clone of the guy whose house this was before he died who was like a kind of balding chubby man uh this man is a seemingly like eight foot tall adonis wearing a body stocking yeah he's a superhero like he, he, yeah. he looks like a, a like a kind of generic superhero with like he's got like a cleft chin and like or in my mind anyway he had a cleft chin. you're looking at him now you could probably well, he doesn't look particularly clefted to me it, it's, it's a big chin and like flowing locks and he, he immediately like beats one of them to death yeah he, he, he kills the alien he kills the uh, he kills the special forces. The, the, the human girl, the human who was like going to like just send his stuff to bashes recycling. Bashes her head in with a pipe because you were going. She was going to recycle all of his stuff. Yeah, he murdered her because he's a hoarder. You see, yep. So he only cares about his stuff. And it's it's like it's a clone of him, but he's got a memory backup. Yeah. So he is the guy. Yeah. Before he died but, of a heart but just attack. a massive muscular body. I really like the selling of it because like they were like oh. Uh, the AI's like the the master made a few like made a clone of himself yeah. with a few modifications and the guy's like a few modifications <laughs> he's eight foot tall he, he does get shot in the chest and it does not seem mm. to bother him mm. he is going to kill the last member of the like information retrieval team but only stops because when in his efforts to bash her skull in with a pipe with a pipe it's with the pipe like I think the art does a good job of like conveying how like raw because he's, he's like a magical like clone man but yeah. he, he rips a pipe off the wall yep. it starts splattering water everywhere well that's the thing in, yeah. in the course of this he starts splattering water on his boxes because he cares so much about his stuff you see yeah. but he doesn't seem to mind about that and she points out that he's ruining his box of trading cards. It's so hard to get complete sets of those. To get complete sets. Tra- if he has a complete set of any trading card game, no wonder he's rich. Yeah, he's sitting on so many Charizards or whatever. And, and fucking like, like black lotuses. Yeah, that would be the one. Right? Yeah, that would be. That, that, that's like the most expensive one. Yeah. And uh, anyway, so just yeah. to, to wrap it up, so her she showing concern for the box of trading cards. Uh, shows him that like maybe she can be trusted and isn't actually an alien in disguise or one of the humans that were going to wipe, like, wipe all of his stuff yeah. anyway. 
and uh, so he allows her to to do the archival work that she needs to do, but only she may do it, and so he keeps her prisoner in his horde, like scanning everything uh, manually in a tiny little machine at the very last panel. Yeah, like a little beeper. I I really liked it. I thought it was a good thriller. Mm-hmm. Thriller. I don't know if you agree. Like I thought it was good. Yeah, yeah it was solid. Yeah. I love thrillers. I love when they turn up. I want there to be more of them, to be honest. In the way that I like one of my favourite things about 2000 AD is the variety. Yeah. I think they're a great thing for that. Thrillers and future shocks. Yeah. I would like I would like there to be one every issue. I, I, I believe that that is not possible. No, I think it's a budget but, thing with uh, future shocks. Yeah. Like giving new writers and stuff a try. I am... Um, what was it called? Like Knacker of the Stars... You know the detective thing? It was a couple of years ago. He was a detective. It was like a kind of Little England thing. And he was like a kind of pudgy detective. Oh, yeah. He had like a, ro- it was like a robot like uh, sidekick in the... It was very like hot fuzz. Cause... It was hot fuzz, yeah. but like 2080 silly. That's my like ideal thriller. Because it was a good like whodunit kind of thing with like the vicar. And... Yeah. But it was, it, was, it was space and silly and like... And Intestinauts as well was a thriller. Oh yes, yeah, that was very good. That was the one where like, it was like pill... Like marines, they were like little two thousand AD robots, but they were it was inner space style stuff yeah. with like gastric acid and like because it was a spaceport, there were so many like things going through your body once you eat a sandwich there. <laughs> I think the thing about thrillers is like you read them and you like you read them and you're like oh that was a thing or like I'd like to see more of that and yeah there's definitely like the most recent thriller before this mm. one was one that uh, I thought had just become an ongoing series to be yeah. honest. It was, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it was like a, a sort of like culty, like uh, yeah. Wicker Man style it's thing. It's got a people name, yeah. so I don't remember it. <laughs> but like it was, it was like a, a paranormal occult, I was going to say investigator, but no, like he was as much a cult as the, the bad guys a were. cult had got like phoned in a guy to go get their sacrifice back. Yeah. Cause he and, was... and his dog was Black Shut, um, who who was a demon that looked like a dog. Who could eat demons. Who could eat demons. It, it, I think it got another thriller. I think it was a second... It got, the, that, the last one was its, its second run. Mm. It wasn't as good as the first one, I thought. No. The Crawly Man was the, the name Crawly of the first Man, one. yeah. But yeah, no. So I can't remember why I brought that up. But well, it's a thriller. That, it, that was the last it, it, good one, one. That was run. And I, I really liked that. And that... I, I would actually support that getting an ongoing series I, I guess I would support that more getting an ongoing series if it was a contest mm-hmm. if it was a reductive contest I would support that more than this one well but... this one what I like about this one or mm. there's a few things I like about it but like one of the things is this is a complete story yes. it has an ending it's like a short story where the ending is like somewhat ironic mm. and it's you know it, it wraps up all nicely it wraps up nicely but I definitely would like to see more of the world because there was, I guess, again, I focus on little tiny things maybe too much, but the whole, like, the problem being that, like, they, when, the, when the war happened, for whatever reason, the aliens and also just war happening had taken so much history mm. from Earth, and, like, they were living without knowledge of the past, and the, the, the horde being such a key thing, because it's like, he's got restaurant menus, he's, yeah. like, he's got, like, he's got maps. Like maps being, I guess, the the real thing, but like, well, that, that's the thing. Like, uh, it, it would probably be quite hard to actually represent a world a world where like old restaurant menus are an important yeah, thing. Yeah, like, I guess it wouldn't survive contact with the but, actual I, thing. I, but... The thing is that like these are presumably like academics that yeah. care about the lack of there being representations of what restaurant menus look like. When the when the EarthGov sports special agent was sort of in disguise, she was like being a sort of petulant teenager and being like, "Oh, adults, you only care about the war. You keep blaming." blaming the war for what happened it was all like little world yeah, that, stuff that, that, that hit quite uh, quite close to home to me because of the amount that uh, people just blame everything on like oh like everything's so expensive because of the war in ukraine yeah or before that's like covid or there's always going to be something that there's, so there's something on. that is the reason rather than just like well you keep having record profits guys like, yeah they never seem to address those record profits yeah but yeah i really liked it and i guess if, if there never was another one again it would maybe be a bit not disappointed, but you know, I would. You'd you know, like to see another. I'd one. like to see another, even if it was another thriller. If I never saw anything from this world again, mm. I wouldn't necessarily be disappointed. But that that makes it sound like my opinion is much harsher than it is. I liked. It. Yeah, I, I liked it a lot. It's a good pun name. Mm-hmm. It's set in New Zealand. It has a surprise superhero at the end. Yeah. Uh, it, if anything, actually, maybe I would be disappointed if there wasn't another one because then the other one could be Die Hard with a Vengeance. With a Vengeance. Or, or Die Hard. What other funny Was it funny just Die Hard 2? Die Hard... The, Die Hard 2 was just Die Hard 2. Die, mm. Hard, Die, Die Hard, Die Hard 2, Die Hard with Vengeance. 
A uh, good day to Free or Die Hard was yeah, one. That was the fourth one about yeah. AI or tech, I guess. I think one of them was just called like Die Hard 5.0 or something. Wasn't which, one like, of them called like A Good Day to Die Hard? Definitely should have been. I think I think it was four that was like 4.0, but I think that was like an America. Yeah, there was like a different title. Yeah. Anyway, this isn't a podcast about the various Die Hard films, but it no, could that's be. the third podcast we'll try and yeah. record. Anyway. On to the, the main event, really? Like the Yeah, I suppose it kind of is, because... Uh, I mean, it doesn't feel thoughts. like a main event, I've but like it is. The last story, this, this prog, is Hershey. Uh, script by Rob Williams, art by Simon Fraser, and letters by Simon Boland. And this is, I, I, I mean, potentially the death of long-running Dread character Hershey? Barbara uh, Hershey? Yes, I believe. Um, so we should do context and stuff because mm-hmm. it's it's the death of a character that's been in it for like forty years. I so so Judge Hershey is my chief judge. Yes. When I was reading the like back in university, mm. uh, anytime the chief judge popped up, it was Hershey. Yeah. Uh, I missed the bit where she stopped being chief judge. I was wasn't reading at that point. Um, but in this story, there have been a number of flashbacks to that, which uh, imply that basically what happened was. Dread said in uh, in public, "I no longer respect your authority," and that's that because that was enough for the High Council of Lo- Judges. Low key, Dread is is not on paper the chief judge, but like he is though, isn't he? He's the wing of government. Like, like, like no one's gonna go against Dread because uh, like I love how much they make of that. Like it, mm. it's such like a it's a line of dialogue. It's a that's a life changing sentence. Yeah, and like it's it's given that weight throughout these Hershey's that yeah. we've read. At some point in this story, like, there's, there's like, she, she calls out Dread on yeah. that, and, like, it, because I can't remember the exact things, but the vibe is, like, you said that in public, and, like, you saying that you don't recognise my authority, I had no choice yeah. but to immediately resign. I had to go on the long walk, <laughs> like in the film. Yeah. I like that film. I like that film as well. It's fine. Takes his helmet off way too early. Yeah, it shouldn't take. It's a dumb nineties film, but, but like it's, it's good. Yeah. But this this particular story, uh, so so there's been a whole thing. Like she's gone to Antarctica. It's been the thing. The film. It's been the, it's been very um, much the thing. She's there with Dirty Frank, who I, I love dearly. Love Dirty Frank and Third Man and and another guy who has a dog called Joe. So like there, there's been a whole thing where like there's there's drugs being dealt in the Antarctic that like if you take them make you feel good and hot importantly yeah um but then spiders crawl out of you and kill everybody things burst out of you and that seems to be the the business plan of the drug dealers yeah so that has been effectively the story up until maybe this prog maybe last prog uh that's not that's all wrapped up now so. Hershey's been going around the world. Yeah. Because the previous one was set. She's been looking for someone called Smiley. I think it's it's do with Sm- Smiley was a judge or something mm. and did bad things, bad judge things that the judges were against, and that was like on her watch. So that's bad for her. Yeah. And she's let. I think he she he's dead or dealt with, and she's dealing with his legacy like worldwide in terms of crime empires and just his sort of influence. He, she's wrapping up his influence in the world. Because the previous one that we were reading, I don't know if there's been many, because this is like book four of Hershey or something like that, is it? Uh, yeah. It says so. Uh, the, book two. It, book two. The cold, the cold in the Bones book two. So that's the part two of The, the, the cold, cold in the, the Bones. Bones. But there was a previous one that, by the same team that was like in South America, I think. Hmm. And um, so it, it's... It, I, one of the things I've liked about Hershey is the, around the, the dread world sort of aspect of going about the place and seeing different places. And this is... Aren't, I can't say it. Antarctica. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's just like a loose sort of settlement with like some judges, but not really. And like, well, they're they're like it's it's kind of like a retirement community for judges. Yeah, because like it's a lot of judges from all of the mega cities that just wind up there because it's the the kind it's of a place that will allow you in after you retire from mega city one. You're not allowed to go back once you take the long nope. walk. Apparently, um, that's, that's a whole thing in this issue. Uh, Hershey calls out Dread on that because apparently he did that at some point and. That seems like a type of thing that would have happened, right? Yeah. But um, it's been good. It's been like good character work mm. and also good like sci-fi work. You were mentioning about how the drug makes you have spiders burst out of you. Yep. That happened to Dirty Frank, and it Dirty was great. Dirty Frank survived that. Yep. There's a great bit where um where where like Dirty Frank's like, 
infiltrating the drugs organization. He's he's Wally Squat. If you know, never, if this is the first thing from from if 2000 you, you've ever seen, if you've never heard of Dirty Frank Dirty, before, Dirty Frank is a judge in the Wally Squad, which is like the Narcs, basically. Mm. Uh, so he he is the judge who looks the least like a judge that they could find. He's like an undercover uh, judge. Yeah, he's, he's like, un- undercover. Yeah. Uh, he is a bearded, homeless looking man who like talks about himself in the fir- third person all the time. Uh, he's he's great. I love Dirty Frank. He's um, got an eye patch. But like because he's he's an arc, like they were like uh he was like infil- in, infiltrating the judge the drug organization and they were like, Oh here if you want to like be a drug user here, take the drug in front of me and he was like, Yep, no problem with that. Glob. See no problem with that. And like later on Hershey was like calling him out and like, You took the drugs and he was like, I'm Molly Squad. Of course I took the drugs. <laughs> Do you know the amount of drugs that I have to take on a day-to-day basis? My name is Dirty Frank. <laughs> uh, but that, I mean, a spider, like... Spider burst out of his genitals from the look yeah, of it. Yeah, every orifice. Yeah. Like, and it wasn't it wasn't like an spider, listeners. It was like a thing spider with like yeah. claws for legs and... Spiders that could very much kill numbers of men. Yeah, and he survived that through some medical treatment. <laughs> but it did involve... All of those things bursting out of him. Yeah. And he's sort of bandaged after that and sad, but like, you know, surviving. Just, just a day in the life of Dirty Frank. <laughs> Great Dirty Frank work. Absolutely. It's like a sad story. And again, I was saying this at the top of the show about how like, you shouldn't really feel sad for Judge Dredd. And like, maybe, no. I don't fe- I don't feel like, they're trying to get like emotion of like, you know, this is Hershey's last story. Spoilers, you know, like, yeah, well, we just said that hours ago. That's, but... uh, that's the thing that I think Tharg was talking about yeah. in the, the very start of the, the, the prog. Um, that I don't think I called out, mm. but... Yeah, but it's very much like this is a momentous issue. It's got a, mem- a memoriam thing on the back, some art. Like it's... I am given to understand, like it, it was well before my time, but I'm given to understand that Hershey was a sporting character in Judge Dredd way back in the day. Yeah. Um, like is one of the good ones in the judges, and that's why she got to be the chief judge justice, and she was the chief judge for quite a long time. She, I, I, I feel like it's fair to say she is a judge wearing the judge dread outfit, but she yep. has a severe bob. She that, does the Tharg said the severe girl with a bob. That is that is her look. Tharg might call out when she first appeared. Actually, I think it was like nineteen eighty or something. It was was it the Judge Child, which is one of the big yeah, like, the classics. Judge Child. Yeah, nineteen eighty. I've read um, the Apocalypse War, which has a bit in it where like the world has ended because nukes have happened, mm. and like they're trying to do some fight back, kind of dirty rebel style, and like Dred's putting like a team together, and he phones around the surviving judges, and like Hershey's boss, her like sergeant's like. Dread wants you, and her she's like, Dread wants me. Like it's like such like a just like, oh, wide eyed rookie. Like that's that's I mean that is the correct way to respond to anybody telling you that Dread wants yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't want anything to do with Judge Dread. No, but it's like there's been hundreds of stories since then, and so involved with the characters, but she's just disconnected to the point where it's like Dread wants me. Like I'm just Anne Judge. Mm-hmm. Like, but yeah, this this is her death. I'm given to understand that she died before. She got done. Okay. She, she died and was revived for this run. Well, whether or not she died before, I'm not actually sure if she's died mm-hmm. in this issue. So, it's not very clear. So, but like she, she, she might have done. But like, it's not like she was definitely shot. No, but it's... I'll go over the actual yeah. events of the story. So okay. basically, we're wrapping up the whole thing with the spider pills, the spider drugs, and she goes with Dread, who helped out at the very end of that story, mm-hmm. back to Mega City One because there are people in Mega City One who were funding all of this. During which time we're getting like a couple of flashback panels of her at different ages and like meeting Dread and also just walking off into the snow in Antarctica. And there's like this whole bit where she's like somebody while she's being a judge in Antarctica is telling her to go into uh, an alley because someone stole something. And that will come up later. But so we have this whole bit. She's saying goodbye to Dirty Frank. I think actually the whole thing about going back to uh, Mega City One might have been the last prog. It was. I read it, them both together. She went to finalize the the, the the big drug bust of the drug company that was funding the thing pills. Yeah. And she got to like sit in on it, but not actually be a part of it because she doesn't exist, kind of thing. It was her last kind of like hurrah in the big sea. That happened this time. She's like she's back in Antarctica. She's saying goodbye to everybody. She goes off to do like just speak to someone that I guess is a criminal in an alleyway. Well, that's she's, she's, she's been a judge in, Ar- in yeah. Ar- Ar- Antarctica. And I really like, there's a room, there's a panel where she's been sworn in to the judges, and it's just like a coffee room. Like, mm. it's just like a wee room. Like, she's been, she's swearing on, like, the Book of the Law or whatever, and it's a big ceremony, but it's just a room with, like, a little shitty table, like, in the background. It's, it's great, like, 
set in work great uh, like, yeah i'm looking at it here actually yeah there's the the book of the law and yeah she's, and they've also got quite crap looking armor crap armor and also like she's she's got like a pathogen in her or something she's got yeah something. there's definitely a bit where like there's a flashback to somebody saying like i can keep giving you these drugs and i think it's like the first page or so yeah. there's like a doctor being like well we can give you them but like it, it's it's tearing you apart kind of thing um, you're, you're going to die again and then the last thing that you see is just hershey in the snow with somebody going like judge question mark there's no blood She's not necessarily been shot, even I, though that was a thing that looked a bit at the beginning like it was going to lead up to that. I, she's not necessarily had a heart attack or anything. Maybe she did. It's I hard to say. very much took it as, this is our last... It's like, she's just doing an average bust. Yeah. Like there's there's Anne Krim that's stolen, like, Anne thing, like a book or whatever, or like a something from a guy's house, and he's in a, he's in a warehouse, which I really appreciated. Mm. Uh, and she's like, go back, sis, and I'll deal with this. And then she doesn't get to deal with it because she just keels over and dies somewhere in a forgotten alley. I mean, she probably is dead because they are making such a big deal about this is our last mm. story, and the back cover is presumably like an old splash page of a panel of a, like old art, and it says in memoriam. Yeah, it could be old art, or it could be like someone like commissioned new thing. It, she she doesn't look like that anymore because she's an old wrinkly no, the, woman. The the, the 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 splash page on the back cover is clearly like from a much older story, if it is indeed from an. Old I don't story. feel like she like. See, within the 2010s, I don't feel like she looked old. I feel like it might no, be like she, a... she got really old really quickly. Yeah, I think she lost like an arm and a leg. She's got a robot arm and yeah. a leg. It didn't come up much in this story in uh, in the snow, but but I mean, like I would say this is maybe aside from Judge Anderson, maybe like the biggest supporting character in Judge Dreads. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. So like... I mean, like there's other named characters where people could be like Judge Death or whatever, but that's like antagonists. Uh, yeah. But like in terms of like named people supporting characters, like. I don't. Know, I feel like if she was going to just die, mm -hmm. it should have been a bit more obvious. I've I've been on the 2000 AD uh, forums mm -hmm. and shout out to them. They don't. The people who like post on those forums just don't like this entire run out of principle. And I don't know what that is, or if it's just that she died once and they shouldn't have brought her back, and maybe mm. they liked her previous death. And I really like these stories as, as a newcomer. Yeah, I've liked the art. I've liked the direction. I've liked that it's Dirty Frank and Hershey bopping about. Remember when they made him a boxer? That was incredible. Like he was, that was the last story. Like he was, he was taking fights and throwing fights because it was south. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah no, that was a while ago though. That was the last one. That was yeah, the previous to it the. It was. It was a while ago. It was a while ago, but like that was within the yeah. last three years or whatever. But I mean, it. Whenever you get like another dread thing in the pro, and it's and it's a good one, it it feels like it's a good like world building thing, and I, I've liked, I've liked it for that. I do agree because like I like I say, I go back and forth on this. I agree that it's kind of nothing yeah like but like that's probably good because probably the point it's, it's, it's the point that they're going for definitely i don't know if it's like a good point but like i was saying you shouldn't like if you if you unironically like judge dread mm. with uncritic unironically is maybe the wrong word but uncritically like him you know that's probably a bad thing and like pulling sympathy for her she's maybe yeah. a complicated thing because she is she was the head fascist yeah the head nazi there's a bit where she's talking in this where it's like, you know, I was trying to do the best I could, but yeah. it's an impossible job. And the guy who's head judge now, he'll, you know, he'll do whatever he does and like eventually he'll make a mistake too. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, but... So it's definitely like that. I don't know. It's hard to like realistically pull sympathy for them. Mm -hmm. Because like... But the, these are characters, like you say, like she she is possibly other than Anderson, like the biggest recurring like character in Dread's life, yeah. And in like readers, like readers have known her since like nineteen eighty. So like you'll you'll like her, but like should you like her really? Like should you yeah. should you like her? You can like the character, but like like when she di as a, in in the real in the world of two thousand AD when she dies, she's a Nazi. Like, I mean, she, like, like her dying in an alleyway is a good thing. Like maybe so, but like compared to the other chief just justices. Oh yeah, like I'm not I saying think she's probably one of the best ones. She's not Judge Caligula. No, but like she is a head Nazi, and and there will be lo you know like you know when Dread does like when he bombs like a district to get rid of some spiders because I read that comic recently. Yep. Uh, but you know you know the people that were living there can fuck off, I guess. Her shield have been in on some of that kind of level oh, yeah, of like sure. killing some amount of people to save the rest. Like she, they are Nazis. Yeah, that is the story. But so it's hard. It's a police state. Yeah. So when it's ongoing and you you watch good dread work, like dread's never going to die, and he, he'll do horrible fascist things. Mm. And you're like, oh, dread, that's hysterical. But like when you're doing like a oh, it's sad that she died issue. 
I mean, I feel like it is still sad that she died. I, I, guess. Don't, I don't know. Like, it's, I, it's, I just it's think... not like a, it's not clean. No, it's not like I, I think it was messily handled, mm. and I'm not entirely sure what they're trying to say by having her die. I think she did because she's old. She's she's yeah, but like if she was twenty and eighty, you know, like so is Dreads. So I know not that's, die that's the thing. Soon. Like, did she ever like read you stuff forcefully taken yeah. from her or whatever? Like, like you say, it's messy and it's it's not like a triumphant death and if it was a triumphant death that would be weird yeah but like it's an ending it's a very quiet yeah. ending to like the the prog <laughs> what what is your number rundown and we'll, we'll leave number rundown yep so my mm -hmm. rankings are number one dread yeah perfect little dread story perfect end to a perfect little dread story perfect end to a perfect little dread story really liked it in fact is it it's almost the number the order in which they run in the magazine because mm -hmm. it's dread it's azimuth Really liked Azimuth. Art's incredible. Mm -hmm. We're back to Susie 9mm. The puns are back. It's great. Uh, I probably put Hershey above the Thriller. Yes. I, don't I, think I didn't think Hershey was perfect at all. And I thought it was a weird ending, but like... I think it was stronger than the third part of the Thriller. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then and, and that's... There's only four of them. I will be boring and agree exactly. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I could... Oh, I could be convinced. No, let's... let's I'll put Azimuth as number one. Really, you like yeah. it better than I like. I said I like I like the dread. I've just not been on as much on board with it as much mm. since he fell off the wagon into not sci-fi enough. Well, it is it, that's what I was saying. Like it has sci-fi elements more than the previous ones. It's just I don't. I didn't necessarily enjoy him being as much of a like a mob killer. I, they were they were going for it though. Like they were mm. going for it. But like I, I think I liked Asmith more because it it did have the Barbie Yaga. Yeah. And Paf, the triumphant return of Papa Leg Day. Fucking love Papa Leg Day. Fucking love Papa Leg Day. <laughs> And, you know, that art. Yeah. And the triumphant return of Susie 9 mm Yeah. And there was more of it. So yeah, absolutely. I'm going to put it as number one. Dread is number two. I think that's valid. As um, Hershey and then the Thriller. Cool. Well, that was the first... Prog slog? First prog slog. We've, we've, we've slogged through it. I did not expect it to be that long. No, neither did I. But we... you, you learn these things as you go. If we do another one, I'm sure it'll be shorter because there'll be new context. It'll but just it might be... also be longer because there'll be another strip to talk about. We could we could say like next week it's the it's the crossover uh, battle True. action. Should we get the? Uh... I'll get the magazine. Get the magazine. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have like a, a tier of buying the magazine. I'll mm. buy it for us. We can read it. Uh, we'll be here for four hours as yeah. we're like, <laughs> just be like, I don't understand who this 1970s commando character is. Very probably. Uh, that was the prog slog. I hope you enjoyed it. You cannot support us on Patreon, but maybe at some point you will be able to. Uh, you cannot follow us on Twitter. You cannot. And uh, you may not even be able to listen to this, but we'll see. And if you do, leave a comment, because, you know. Bye! Bye!